there's a number of reasons for that, but I mean, historically, um, you need to look back to the turn of the 20th century where the Mendel's laws of heredity had recently been rediscovered um, here in Cambridge, actually, by William Bateson. And people were looking at uh, trying to understand how heredity worked, how boy, girl, baby, how all that information got passed down. And um, Thomas Hunt Morgan uh, at, uh, in New York was actually an embryologist and he was looking around for for organisms to, uh, to, to use in the lab and somebody had suggested to him he keeps and tries these fruit flies or vinegar flies um, that had recently been introduced into the lab. They're easy to keep, you can mash up bananas and very fast life cycle, 10 days or something like that and you've got new flies ready to breed. Um, and he, he struggled along with these for a couple of years but, but there, was, there was nothing there. Genetics, they all look the same. Genetics, in order to study it, um, requires variation, things that look different. Um, but he was about to give up when all of a sudden he noticed a, a male in one of these cultures that had white eyes instead of red. And essentially that just started an explosion. Once he had one mutation, um, then many, many more were, were discovered. And, and Morgan with three unbelievably talented students, um, Calvin Bridges, uh, Alfred Sturtevin uh, and Herman Muller, uh, essentially over the, the next 10 years laid the foundation for modern genetics. Genes are on chromosomes that are organised in a linear way. Um, all of this was completely unknown at the time and really the fly provided that. Um, so the, the work was scientifically uh, influential and over the course of that 10 years or so thousands of different um, mutations were recovered flies with different body colours, funny shaped wings, missing wings, funny shaped legs, anything you, know, you can name by looking at a fly which is an incredibly sophisticated uh, 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 little organism despite being less than 2 millimetres long. Um, there were thousands of those. So it was a powerful research tool for understanding genetics because you had a lot of mutations, a lot of variation. But the other reason was that, that Morgan and his students were superb at sharing the information. They, 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 they provided not only a huge lists of all these mutations and where they were, uh, how they were organised along the fly's chromosomes, but they sent out flies to everybody and, and that kind of um, um, started um, a, a tradition that is still very strong in the Drosophila community where people are keen to, to share uh, and develop resources and I mean when I was a lad this was the book The Genome of Drosophila Melanogaster which is essentially you know, lists of fly mutations oh look on the front cover it's tattooed on my arm um, that's only because I work on that particular mutation. Um, so it became a workhorse for, 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 um, uh, for uh, trying to understand biology and development of biology by genetics. So Morgan got the Nobel Prize and then his student Herman Muller uh, got the Nobel Prize in the, um, in the 40s for demonstrating that x-rays could actually make mutations in chromosomes and that was the first uh, the Artificial Transmutation of the Gene was the name of his paper. Um, and then in the 80s, um, but people were using flies a lot, Eric Wieschaus and Christian Nusslein Volhart working in, in Heidelberg did a quite remarkable thing. They, they essentially carried out a huge genetic screen to look for uh, mutations which stopped uh, Drosophila embryos developing properly and, uh, and essentially that uh, screen, which also won the Nobel Prize, um, was uh, the foundation for our modern uh, molecular understanding of how you go from a single cell to a complex patterned uh, three-dimensional organism and the genes and the logic behind that uh, process of flies is exactly the same as, as the way that a mouse or a human uh, uh, pattern themselves in many respects. So, And finally the, the last thing and why 
people still use flies is not only because of the extremely sophisticated genetic uh, tools that we have for manipulating the fly, but also um, the fly's got a very small genome. It's uh, 120 megabases. It's, 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 um, uh, it's a twentieth of the size of the human genome. But the fly genome encodes 14,000 genes, um, humans less than 20,000. 60% of the genes encoding the human genome have got a, a, a counterpart in the fly genome. And 85% of um, human uh, genes known to cause human diseases have got uh, counterparts in the fly. And one can use the fly to understand the molecular basis of why these uh, mutations in humans cause these diseases. People use flies to study cancer, to study a whole range of sophisticated neurological defects. I mean, there is nothing you can't study in flies. You can get flies drunk, you can get them addicted to cocaine, you can, um, uh, you can make mutations that make them really stupid, you can make mutations that make them really smart, they've got learning, memory, complex behaviour. They can fly, we can't fly. Um, they're incredibly sophisticated and useful organisms and it is cheap and effective uh, to keep them as uh, in the research lab. So, you know, more than a hundred years of, of, of research based on the fact that we, um, that they are incredibly uh, useful and easy to uh, manipulate uh, tools for genetics, very sophisticated in terms of their development and, and, and all over biology and the fact that, the, the, that prior to the whole open science network people were already sharing lots of information about flies. So it is perfect. I've been working on flies for 40 years now since I was an undergraduate.